First of all, can I say that I am glad that in two days' time we will be finally leaving the EU. It is something which my party and I personally campaigned for. It is something which would probably not have happened had it not been for the votes in crucial debates in this House when Remainers tried to uh, undermine the result of the referendum. But I have got to say today that euphoria is tinged with sadness because the deal which the Prime Minister has struck will not apply equally to all parts of the United Kingdom. Northern Ireland will not enjoy all the benefits of this deal. And indeed, we will still find ourselves in many ways tied to some of the uh, restrictions which uh, your EU membership um, have been fr uh, freed from in, the, in the, the rest of the United Kingdom. We welcome that there, are, there have been um, limitations um, uh, and mitigations to the withdrawal agreement, but unfortunately the withdrawal agreement is still an integral part of the Government's policy and an integral part of this deal, because this deal commits the Government not only to implementing this agreement, but supplementing agreements. And they've got to do it in good faith. And therefore, um, we find that the detrimental impacts of the withdrawal agreement, that Northern Ireland will still be subject to some EU laws made in Brussels. Those laws will be adjudicated by the European Court of Justice. There will be barriers to the internal trade within the United Kingdom between Northern Ireland and GB and GB and Northern Ireland. And already it's, the impact of that is being manifested. GB uh, companies are no longer and indicating they will no longer supply to Northern Ireland. We have seen that uh, VAT on cars will increase in Northern Ireland and cars from the 1st of January 20% second hand cars 20% dearer in Northern Ireland as a result of VAT rules applying and a whole range of other things. I will. Thank you for coming. Anyway, does he, he agree with me that there seems to be no protection for the single market regulations, in particular for banking and investment firms? There is not even the option for our firms in Northern Ireland uh, to apply for authorisation to the equivalent of the FCA. Does he feel that that is an anomaly that needs to be addressed as well? And, and of course, it is not only in those areas, but the Prime Minister talked about the way in which, because there is no longer any need for regu regulatory conformity, uh, that uh, the UK could free itself to develop fintech, biosciences, agricultural practices, but of course, because Northern Ireland will still remain under some of the, the EU regulations, we will not be able to benefit in many ways from those new exciting opportunities. However, having said that, the Northern Ireland will still be part of the United Kingdom, and uh, I know that people have said that this deal will drive a wedge in the Union. The wedge in the Union can only be driven when the people of Northern Ireland decide that they no longer wish to remain part of the UK. And I believe that when it comes to a choice between joining the Irish Republic, a small nation which will bob about in the storms of economic uh, chaos that will uh, result in the future, and being anchored to the fifth largest economy in the world, which will prosper under Brexit, then I believe that that choice will be an easy choice for the people of Northern Ireland. What I would say, though, to the Prime Minister is, Prime Minister, there will be economic damage as a result of our exclusion from the, um, this agreement. But there are opportunities. There is a joint committee. There is a review of the agreement. There is the, the fact that we now have parliamentary sovereignty. There is the fact that the government can act unilaterally to undo economic damage. And we will continue to press you and your government, Prime Minister, to live up to your promises that Northern Ireland will not be disadvantaged as a result of the deals which you have done. Let me finally say that we will not be voting for this deal today. And I think the reasons are obvious, because we are excluded from many of its benefits. That does not mean 
that we have any common cause with the petulant remainers in this Parliament who want to undo the referendum. It is because we are disappointed Brexiteers. It is because we are people who believed that the United Kingdom should leave, should leave as a whole, and that is not happening. And for that reason, we will not be voting for this deal today.